Electric motors can draw huge amounts of electric current when they're being started from a complete stop. Connecting a motor that isn't moving directly to a live power source can produce a surge of electric current that is easily more than 10 times the amount that the motor would normally draw when it's already running. Now, that doesn't have to be an issue if the motor is quite small, but if the motor is quite big, the story changes, because that surge of current can be so big that it can trip your breakers or blow fuses, uh, cause voltage drops that might affect other appliances on the same uh, power system, but also it can cause all kinds of mechanical issues, because you can imagine that if you have a really big, really powerful motor, and it gets turned on just like that at maximum power, that it produces a huge amount of torque, which puts loads of stress on the gearbox or you know other mechanical parts that might be connected to that motor. So what you want to do is find a more slow and controlled, you know, less aggressive way of starting that motor. And there are many different ways of doing that. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at kind of an old school method, which is the start delta starter. Now, the Star Delta Starter is specifically used on three-phase AC motors, which are actually the most common type of electric motor used for all kinds of industrial applications. So let's just quickly take a look at the very basics of a three-phase power system, right? In a three-phase system, you've got three wires, which are your three phases, and then sometimes you also have a neutral wire. Now, each one of these phases has a certain voltage relative to that neutral wire. And that voltage, at least if you live in Europe, is about 240 volts, just like the voltage on a normal power outlet. In fact, that is how a normal power outlet is connected. You take one of those phases, you connect it to one pin of the power outlet, and the other pin of the power outlet, or hole, I should say, I guess, is connected to the neutral wire. And then you have 240 volts AC. And that can be any one of these phases. So 240 volts is what we call the phase voltage, because each phase has a voltage of 240 relative to the neutral wire. But then there is also a voltage between these different phases, and that's actually something else than 240. You see, if we take a look at the vector diagram for the three-phase system, and we subtract two phases from each other, we get a resulting vector that has a size of about 415. So, the voltage between these different phases is actually 415 volts AC, and that's what we call the line voltage of the system. So the phase voltage is the voltage of each phase relative to the neutral wire. The line voltage is the voltage that we find between these different phases. Now a three-phase electric motor can be wired up in two different ways. It can be wired up using the star or Y connection, which looks like this. Or it can be wired up using a delta or triangle connection, which looks like this. In the star connection, the windings are all connected to one central point and the other ends of the windings are connected to the phases of the power supply. That central point becomes a neutral point, so the voltage in that central point will be zero, so you can also attach a neutral wire to that point if you want to. Now this means that each one of those windings is exposed to 240 volts AC, right? Because the phase voltage is 240 volts AC, which is the voltage between the neutral wire and each phase, so that means the voltage across one of our windings is about 240 volts AC. In the triangle connection that's different, because in the triangle or the delta connection, the windings are connected between the phases like this, which means that each winding is exposed to the line voltage or the voltage between two phases instead of the phase voltage, which is 415 volts. So, in the delta or triangle connection, the windings of the motor are exposed to a much higher voltage than in the star connection. This means that because we're applying a much higher voltage to the windings of that motor, it'll also draw way more electric current and produce way more power, and consume way more power as well. So at this point, you might be able to guess what a star delta starter actually does, right? So an electric motor consumes way less electric current when it's connected in star than when it's connected in delta. 
So what the star delta starter does is when you start the motor, when you turn it on, it connects the windings in a star formation, reducing the amount of current, reducing the power output of the electric motor. Then it spins up the motor, it allows the motor to get up to speed, and once the motor reaches enough speed, then we switch it over to delta and give it maximum power. So instead of going from zero straight to maximum power, which would produce massive amounts of startup current, what we do is we switch it in star mode first, which kind of reduces the current to an acceptable level. We allow the motor to spin up, and then once it's up to speed a bit, then we switch it over to delta mode and we can give it full power. This can be a manual switch, so you just have a switch, you set it to star mode, you wait for a bit for the motor to spin up and then you set it to delta mode. Uh, but it can be an automatic device as well. It can be an automatic switch that uses a timer. So you, let's say after five seconds or after 10 seconds, it switches from star to delta. Um, or it could actually be uh, based on the speed of the motor. So you can have a device that actually detects the RPM of the electric motor, and then it switches over once the motor reaches a certain RPM. So the advantage of this is that it's very simple and therefore very cheap as well. I mean, it's basically just a, a fancy switch, right? The disadvantage is that it's still not quite that smooth because, okay, so you've made it a bit less aggressive by not going from zero straight to full power, but on the other hand, you've just introduced one extra step, which is still not what I would call, you know, smooth startup. But nowadays, of course, now that we have all sorts of fancy solid state electronics, we can make speed controls and variable frequency drives, which are capable of continuously varying the voltage that is applied to the motor and also continuously varying the frequency that we apply to the motor. And so now it's possible with these electronics to, to ramp up a motor to its optimal speed in a very smooth, very controlled way with effectively an infinite number of steps between zero and maximum power. And now that these things are getting cheaper and cheaper, um, old school star delta starters are becoming less common nowadays. So that's why at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that star delta starters are kind of an old school way of going about this. But I thought they would be interesting to talk about nonetheless. So hopefully you agree with that and enjoyed this video. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching.